Hi there. This is the return of Artist Sense on YouTube. Hopefully I'll be able to uh, keep up with this pace and keep posting more videos than, than in the past. Uh, let me give you an update on my life. So I'm Edward from Artist Sense and in the last two months I joined Seven Cents at, uh, in Budapest and working in a perfumery has given me a different perspective on perfumes and uh, a new a new lease on life, if you will, in the perfume world. Uh, it's a lot less about smelling perfumes and being crazy about one single scent. It's more about seeing how perfumes work on, on different people. And I really enjoy that. I've, I've loved recommending perfumes to others, helping people find uh, what they're looking for, you know, exactly to their taste or uh, you know, helping them along their journey, discovering new scents, and you know, for for myself, it's been wonderful discovering new scents as well. I can get my hands on the most interesting releases. Like we we just got Amygdala by Mandy Terosa, and I love Mandy Terosa. It's such a it's such a wonderful house. So I figured I would focus on what I love the most. Whoever follows me on Instagram knows me as Mr. Iris. And uh, I'm still crazy about iris scents. So I figured I'd talk about some of my favorite irises I've discovered in Seven Cents. Um, at first, I'll give some shout outs, and like some bonus uh, recommendations that aren't about perfumes that aren't necessarily just about iris. Um, let me start it off with uh, yesterday's haze from from Imaginary Authors. So Imaginary, Imaginary Authors is a famous brand, everybody knows it. It's about fictional authors that create stories. And Yesterday's Haze kind of flies underneath the radar, which is funny because we have a little crop duster uh, plane on the bottle. This one doesn't get mentioned often. This one has notes of fig and iris, and those two combined are beautiful. It's uh, kind of like a dusty, sweet red iris, you know, that is just dropped to the floor because it's already that, uh, that ripe. And it, it, I think it's fantastic for summertime. Also has cream, tonka, tonka, tonka bean, tree bark, walnut bitters, and the fictional note or the fantastical note of, or fantasy note of orchard dust. Um, yeah, this one to try if you like fig, if you like iris, it's beautiful. Uh, next on the list is Them by Neanderthal. And Neanderthal, Neanderthal is a Japanese house and uh, they've created these beautiful sculptural bottles. The original ones look like this. They uh, imitate the flint, the flint daggers that um, more primitive people used in the past. And Them is for me, it's it's kind of like the concept of otherness, because um, in in the contrast we have us. That's a, that's the the scent of warmth of like human warm warmness, and them is something that has crawled out of the sea. It has notes of seaweed and neroli and iris and leather. This is a beautifully wearable uh, leather for the summertime and with iris, and it's it's quite good. Next on the list is Miss Poofer. This one, my my, look at this bottle. Look how gorgeous that is. Isn't it great? It's uh, from it's from a Scandinavian brand called Storaskogen, and uh, they create these fantastical uh, perfumes around phenomena or interesting stories. And Miss Poofer is actually the effect that happens, um, well, it's kind of like an unknown phenomenon, phenomenon that happens over um, lakes in, in the wintertime. There's like this boom or like this sonic boom that, that happens over, over lakes. And they tried to capture what that phenomenon would be like in perfume form. And this one doesn't have iris listed, but I wear it as if it would, or, or it kind of, Fills the same genre as um, as most of my favorite iris perfumes. So this one has notes of immortelle, bergamot, fig leaf, ozone, 
pine, malt sugar, which gives us this really beautiful sweetness, vetiver, cypriol, and smoke. Um, this one is so interesting. You have to try on skin, and it really does change. It's at once kind of sweet, powdery, and that's why I say orris. It's orris-like to me. But you also get notes of pine, um, malt sugar. It's azonic. Uh, it's, it's, it's really wonderful, and I love the bottle design. Kudos to these guys. This is 30 mils. And um, and one of the more exciting perfumes I smelled um, since starting or since taking the next step of my fragrance journey. Uh, the next one is is Flesh by Pekji. This is uh, this is one that this is one that is newer, and his newest line. Um, Pekji is a Turkish brand from an Armenian perfumer, where he's Armenian born in Turkey. And his newest line is uh, All Contains Iris. All in different kind of themes. This one's the most irisy to me. It's flesh, uh, called flesh, and it's trying to capture this idea of getting out of your head and getting into your flesh. It doesn't replicate human skin one-to-one. Uh, -one but it does create an interesting experience for sure. This one has ambrette, apricot, civet, iris, musks, osmanthus, paint, sandalwood, and vanilla. Um, and it has this really great cleanliness to it. It's almost like, uh, if like an android tried to replicate what human skin would be like and try and catch that softness like it's only ever seen it but it's never smelt it it catches the softness of human skin um yeah it's really beautiful if you like iris i think you would love this one um and then on to the next one next we have uh trimmers from joram joram studio it's uh, by Ewan McCall. He's a Scottish perfumer and uh, he's a genius. He really is. Everything that he's made has either been interesting, exciting, different, but he's always surprising and he always makes something that is unique. And this one is, uh, I've called it Iris, or Iris Cree's uh, Cerealist Cousin, the legendary Iris and Peach fragrance by, by Jacques Fat. This one has Angelica, so Angelica thyme, which gives it kind of like this bitter herbal facet, but it's more so about this beautiful cloudy orris butter. It's just gorgeous. And it opens with that primarily. It's drier, um, not that sweet, even though it does have sweetness to it, but it's not, it's not, mm, it's not like this uh, like sweet cloud of iris. It's a very fluffy orris butter. And then out of thin air, pretty much, just magically, mm -hmm. when you reach a two hour mark, this nectarine note just appears like seemingly out of nowhere. And I'm so stunned by this. Every time I wear it, um, please, please try it out. Please try all of Joram's creations, all of you and McCall's creations. They're wonderful. Then we have Fundamental. By, by Rubini. Rubini is a house, it's actually a perfumery from Verona, and it's been uh, in a generation for, for a long time. And this depicts, this depicts the story of uh, Andrea Rubini's, I believe, grandfather, who opened up the perfumery, and he made, uh, he made a splash by selling to all kinds of different people in the, in the village, in the, in this, in the city. Um, anything from like grease paint to opera singers. He'd sell his cosmetics in, in the local bordello. He would sell um, like eau de colognes to the barber shop, etc. And this kind of captures that uh, adventure or like that timeline of Rubini perfumes, uh, perfumery. And primarily this is all about iris and grape. It has this beautiful citrus opening. There's touch of lavender, touch of beeswax in here, touch of leather, and uh, touch of like 
aromatic woods in the dry down, but honestly, it's it's 100% about orris and grape. This beautiful, white, refreshing, but dry grape. Oh, it's so good to wear in the summertime. I, I adore this one. And then, um, well, this one, this next one is, is something special. This has flown to the top of my iris list. Before we get there, there is one more, no, one more perfume. Forgot to mention this one. This one is Hard Techno. This one is Hard Techno by uh, Miguel Matos. He's a Portuguese perfumer and uh, editor for Fragranica. He's been writing uh, fragrance articles, reviews for, for years before he started doing his own stuff. And he really loved classic kind of um, civet heavy sheepers which he also turned into, um, he kind of like went into like bubblegum sheep rose, banana, tuberose. These are favorite notes of his. And if you think you know Miguel Matos, you don't know Miguel Matos until you've tried this. This is his, his newest creation and he's definitely leveled up. Uh, I've tried his first creations up until now and you can really tell when a perfumer, when an artist develops and matures and uh, he's doing stuff that is really interesting with two newest fragrances. I'll talk about Tobacco Smeraldo next time. This is hard leather. When I first heard about this, I thought it would be a lot more dirty. You know, when you think about hard techno, you think about clubbing, you think about people, you think about sweat, you think about dirty kind of scents at the end of the night. Um, and it has cumin in it, so I thought it would be on that dirty side, but it's not. There's also iris, vanilla, sandalwood, and musk. And this is like so sweet, it's so beautiful, um, but but intimate and wearable, so this is comforting. Hard techno for Miguel, he was saying, is like this feeling of comfort, you know, being in between all those bodies uh, is is a comforting feeling. And it's, a, it's kind of like a, like a personal take on what techno is or what hard techno is. Uh, I love this one. It lasts for so long, like eight, ten hours. I wore this. It, there's like a touch of cumin in the beginning that's a little, little cheeky. It's a little dirty, but um, not overwhelming in any way. And then it's all about like sweet iris, vanilla, sandalwood, soft, musky, beautiful. Um, yeah, I wore this and the barista at the cafe I went to right after my shift was like, uh, she brought out the coffee to me and she's like, oh, so you're you're the good smelling one. She's like, is this a unisex perfume? And yes, it absolutely is. All right, last but certainly not least is from the house of Mendy Terosa and it's Netuno. Wow. I jumped over this bottle every time I tried Mendy Terosa because, uh, well, compared compared to caps like this, Le Mat, I really love these bottles. Like these ones are my these ones are my favorite bottles, and this one just didn't really do it for me. Uh, in the past, there was like a mirror cap. Uh, it was a cap that had like mirrors um, based on it, but. I don't know, I, I just didn't reach for it. I never even tried it. And I started working here and I was getting to know the scents better and this one blew me away. It just, wow. Okay, let me read the notes off to you. So this has kink pepper, ginger, nutmeg, cyclamen, rose, leather, iris, rum, carrot seed, leather, uh, I've said that twice. Benzoin, white musk, and vetiver. And this is definitely one of those perfumes where you cannot single out one single note, really. It's called like the cosmic bouquet, like this bouquet of iris and 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 rose. Uh, this is so good to wear. I love this. It's it's wonderful. Um, you know, my girlfriend loves it too. Uh, every time I come home with it. Uh, with it on him. She's like, oh wow, you smell really good. And 
it's like a cosmic iris. That's what I would call this. It, I can't even do it. I can't even do it justice. But it's, um, of course, it's a synthetic composition. Uh, it has a lot of musks in here. The rum note gives this beautiful kind of um, fullness to it. You know, it's kind of like a like almost like a golden liqueur that flows out of this. Uh, it's it's uh, it just leaves me speechless every time I wear it. It's transparent. It's like a transparent leather with uh, this cosmic iris note um, with musks, with rum, with spices, with a nutmeg, and uh, what else was in there? Ginger. Those really give it some interesting kind of touch of sweetness, touch of spicy, touch of like a sharp spiciness. Ah, oh, it's just so good. Um, <laughs> Yeah, try it out, guys. Uh, if you love if you love Iris, keep following me. I'll always bring you the most interesting Iris. And uh, I hope to see you guys at Exons. And until next time, stay tuned.